Thank you very much for accepting our invitation, uh, Mr. Mark. You are uh, the director of um, one of the renowned uh, documentary film about the Gulenist cult in the United States. Uh, the, the title of the documentary is Killing Ed. It's a famous uh, documentary film, feature film uh, that exposes a shocking uh, truth about the Gulenist cult in the United States. The, uh, which has the largest network of taxpayer funded charter schools in the United States. Uh, and Mr. Mark uh, Hall uh, shows how it's a worst case scenario uh, being operated because, being, uh, because of being operated with questionable academic labor and H1 visa, visa standards by member of the, uh, the Gulenist movement. Uh, in three days' time, we are going to commemorate the July 15 coup attempt uh, that was conducted by a faction in, within the military linked to Fethullah Gulen, who is living currently in the United States in Pennsylvania. Uh, so, of course, uh, you had, you know the group in the United States. You know how they operate in the United States. My first question to you would be, Mr. Hall, how did you feel or what did you thought, think when you first heard that a coup attempt is taking place in Turkey and Gulenists are responsible for that coup attempt? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on this fifth anniversary of this very violent coup attempt in Turkey. As you say, it was led by the Gulen movement, FETO. Um, that day I was of the coup, I was working with um, an editor in an edit suite, and we had a number of televisions on uh, watching CNN and other news channels. And then it came up that there was a coup in Turkey, uh, at least an attempted coup. And immediately, the people that I was with who had worked with me on Killing Ed and had spent almost five years with me on that project, researching the Gulen movement in the United States, we came to believe that it must have been something related to the Gulen movement. Having spent um, years researching this very mysterious group and how they operate in the United States and how they sought to infiltrate our power structure here in America, it uh, didn't surprise me when it turned out that um, the Gulen movement was attributed uh, to fomenting the, this violent coup in Turkey in 2016. You say that, okay, it was not surprising to you at all. Can you just also give in connotations, making con connections with your own experience of the group with the uh, killing, with the killing ad project? Why wasn't it surprising for you? What was there uh, with them? What did you see with them that didn't surprise you? Well, we found through our production of the film Killing Ad that the Gulen movement in the United States is a very mysterious group. Um, it has a very shady organization, and um, you know it's it's very extensive and it, it it has a lot of money. And it always seemed to us that <clears throat> through the use of the money that they were generating from the 173 charter schools in the United States, that they were using that money for things other than the operation of the schools. Because if you go to the schools here in the United States, these are not private schools. These are schools that are free to parents, but are paid for by U.S. taxpayers. You go to these schools and you realize they're in old shopping centers or old grocery stores. Not much money, if you look at the exterior, is going to the education of children. So where was that money going? And I think after several years, we expected that much of that money was going to political goals of the Gulen movement, both here in the United States as well as in Turkey. And so we saw the infiltration of the Gulen movement into um, the political structure, the power structure here in the United States with trips to Turkey for very high level um, political figures and uh, teachers and students as well, um, as well as hosting a lot of uh, uh, various events for political figures in Washington, D.C., as, as well as other state capitals. So when you see this infiltration or this pattern of how they sought to get into um, power structures here in the United States, 
it really didn't come as a big surprise that they would use the money, the power, and the other things that they had um, uh, generated here in America to try to overthrow the uh, democratically elected government there in Turkey. The, the group is extremely corrupt. We know that both in the United States and in Turkey, in terms of uh, their infiltration into the political circles. But could you just imagine that one of those actions on July 15, like bombing the parliament, shooting at people, uh, all these wild, uh, violent actions uh, came from the group. W what would you feel for what would be your reaction if you saw somebody doing the same thing in the United States? Oh, if that happened here in the United States, it would be shocking. It would be um, as worse as any other event in recent history, 9-11 or attempted assassinations of presidents. It would be something that would um, uh, draw the attention of any American, every American that lives here in the United States. Should there be that type of violent coup attempt uh, with tanks running over people, with uh, F-16s bombing things like your parliament in Turkey. All of those things would just, it would be such an unusual event that Americans might not even be able to comprehend it. It would be quite unusual and very shocking to all of us here. And, and on that day, Turkish people took up, took the streets, tried to stop the coup attempt, and they, they succeeded. 250 of them were killed and two, more than 2,000 of them were wounded. But at the end of the day, the Turkish people suppressed the uh, violent coup attempt taking place on July 15 night. What is your insights about the Turkish people's struggle against the military, this military violent coup attempt? I think watching the footage that we saw coming from Turkey uh, during the coup attempt on July 15th was very inspiring because I believe Turkish people from all walks of life, all political persuasions got together and in a very democratic manner pushed back on this coup, coup attempt by, a, uh, by the Gulen movement, by FETO, a very secretive, shady operation that was seeking to overthrow uh, the democratically elected government there in Turkey. I, it's inspiring because no matter what you might have believed in uh, there in Turkey, people came together and pushed back and they walked down the Bosphorus bridges towards those tanks. And some people got shot. Some people were run over by tanks. Um, some people were injured and, and killed, as you say, over 200 people. And those types of things are, that, that level of violence is something that is really uncalled for in democratic society. And um, but it was very inspiring to see how people reacted to that in mass to put down this coup attempt. And also, last question actually. So th this FETO issue, the Gulenist issue, is one of the topics uh, that poisoned the U.S.-Turkish relationship. What is your recommendation? Turkey is as asking a tradition of FETO and uh, it's called to Turkey. What is your uh, recommendations for the U.S. administration to do with the group and what should the United States as a state do against the group? Well, I think the Gulen movement um, or FETO as it's called in Turkey is uh, not good for the democracies of the United States nor is it good for the democracy of Turkey. And as such, I think we should not allow them to operate here in the United States. We should not allow them to operate schools for children. Uh, there's over 175 of these schools in 26 states. They're also generating many hundreds of millions of dollars in tax funds from these schools. It's a very anti-democratic group when you look beyond all the pleasantries that they tell people, all of the lies that they have told our politicians about who they are. This is not a group that we want in either of our countries. And my recommendation has been and would be continued to be that Fethullah Gulen and his high level associates um, be sent back to Turkey to stand trial for the things that they did on the July 15th. 
And I think they can receive a good fair trial in Turkey. I don't think there's any reason to believe that they would not be treated fairly. I think that would be expected by all of us, whether we're in Turkey or the United States. But there's no reason, I believe, to provide Petula Gulen and other high-level Gulenists safe sanctuary here in the United States. I think that's a bad thing for our relationship with Turkey. I think it's a bad thing for the democracy of the United States, and I don't think it should be allowed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hall. I, I appreciate your insights, and I, I really thank you for exposing uh, that group uh, so subtly in your documentary, because as a nation, we experienced a lot from the group, both how they infiltrated into the Turkish government and state institutions, as well as uh, the, their violent action during the July 15 coup attempt. So I thank you for your efforts uh, to expose the group. Thank you very much for having me.